Welcome back to another video. My new guys who watch my videos want to get into engineering or are currently studying some type of engineering. And you're probably wondering what it takes to get an engineering degree and what's in store for you. Well, in this video, I will answer that question and give you a lowdown of what a four-year engineering program looks like and what's even required to get an engineering degree. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Victor and I'm a mechanical engineering graduate from Boston University. I know I would have loved to see a video like this as a freshman in college, so that's why I'm going to be very transparent and open about my grades today. So fall semester of 2012 was my first semester of engineering where I took a total of four courses. First on the list was Calculus 2 where I ended up getting a B plus. This class was pretty straightforward because I already learned a lot of the content such as series and integration in my AP Calculus class in high school. The second course was Physics 1 where I ended up getting a B minus. This was a pretty challenging course for me because I had never taken AP Physics in high school and a lot of the new concepts such as Newtonian mechanics were introduced at a really fast pace. The third class was Writing Seminar where I ended up getting a B. I was not a very big fan of this class because the workload was huge for a level 100 class and we had to analyze lots of French literature, write essays every week, and have in-class discussions. My professor also had a very thick French accent so I didn't know what she was saying 50% of the time. The final course was Intro to Engineering Computation where we learned how to write MATLAB scripts and stuff like foreign while loops, data structures, matrices, GUIs, and all of that jazz. This was probably the most difficult course for me that semester because programming was such a foreign thing to me and it required a totally new way of thinking. I thought I was going to fail the course after every project and exam but I ended up getting a B+. And to give you guys some context, getting an A at my school was extremely difficult and the average GPA for undergrads at my school was a 3.04 on a 4.0 scale. Also rumor has it that Boston University is up there with MIT, Princeton, and RPI in terms of tough grading so I would say I did okay for my first semester. Anyways, let's move on to spring 2013 which was the second half of my freshman year. First course I took was multivariate calculus where we learned things like multiple integration, spherical and cylindrical coordinates, and partial differentiation, and I ended up getting a C plus. Now the grade I got doesn't reflect the difficulty of this course, but rather my poor decision making skills. I overloaded on courses that semester and it turned into a pick your poison type of situation and this happened to be the course whose lectures I skipped all the time. The second course I took was physics 2 which taught things like electromagnetism, circuits, and optics which are all new concepts to me but I really enjoyed this course and I ended up getting a B plus. The third course I took was writing and research seminar which was a continuation of the first semester writing course except the focus was on research-based writing. I could actually understand what the professor was saying this time and I ended up getting an A-. minus. The next course I took was called Mechanical Design for Manufacture, which served as an intro to mechanical engineering. In this course we learned basic design principles and we had a final project where we had to design a winch pulley system to lift a 500 pound load. Finally, I took a course called Tissue Engineering Drug Delivery, which introduced biomedical engineering concepts. I loved this course so much that it almost convinced me to switch majors. Then summer of 2013, I did an internship in Ohio, and I was back in school to start my sophomore year in the fall of 2013. The first course that I took was Reading and Writing Chinese, which was an elective that I chose, and I ended up getting an A. This was a burnt course for me because I already knew how to read and write Chinese. The second course that I took was Differential Equations, which I got a B- in. In this course, we used the knowledge gained in Calculus 1, 2, and 3 to solve first and order differential equations and systems. The third class was called Design and Manufacture. That was a project-based course where we got assigned into groups and where we had to design, budget, schedule, and build a desk lamp organizer. I ended up getting an A- in this course. The fourth class was electric circuits where we learned about current and voltage and things like op amps and capacitors. We also had labs every week to build circuits that lasted 4-6 to six hours which was an absolute nightmare and I ended up getting a B in this class. The last course was energy and thermodynamics where we learned things like energy, entropy, and different thermal cycles and I ended up getting a B-. Moving on to the winter of 2013, I continued doing my internship and I returned back to school in the spring of 2014 for my second semester of sophomore year. I started off the semester by taking linear algebra and I ended up getting a C-. This was by far the lowest grade I got so far on university. Even though this was a challenging course, it doesn't explain why I got this grade. The actual reason was because I got really unlucky and I had this really psycho roommate named Derek who would blast music every day at 5 a.m. in the morning while I was attempting to sleep. If you're watching this video, Derek, I want to let you know that I still hate your guts and I hope that you visit a therapist by now. The second course was Mechanics 1, which honestly wasn't even that difficult because it was pretty much just force analysis of static structures. But I ended up getting a C because I was so fucked up from not getting enough sleep that semester. 
The third course is Intro to Material Science, where we learn about the microscopic properties and defects of different materials. I ended up getting a B in this class, which was a miracle to me because my professor was pregnant and was always in a bad mood, so everyone was afraid to ask questions during class, and my roommate also stole my textbook for this class. Lastly, I took a course called CAD and Machine Components. That was my favorite course that semester, and I ended up getting an A. We learned geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and how to create 2D technical drawings and 3D models in SOLIDWORKS, which is a very useful design software tool that a lot of mechanical engineers use. We also completed a group project where we designed a gearbox assembly using SOLIDWORKS, and that was the end of my second year. My junior year began the fall of 2014, and at this point, I was halfway done with my undergrad studies. I took an intro to architecture course, which I thought was going to be easy, but I was wrong. It ended up being a lot of reading and writing, so I ended up with a B-. I also took a very practical and useful course called Engineering Economy that covered topics like present worth analysis, cost optimization, and budgeting, and I ended up getting an A. The third course I took was Mechanics and Materials, which taught stress and strain relationships and how materials deform and fail under different loading conditions. The things I learned in this class helped me throughout my graduate study courses and a lot with my job interviews. The last course we took was Product Design, where we learned a lot of simulation tools such as FEA, Design Principles, and how to use Arduino microcontrollers. We also had a complete a group project where we designed and manufacture a donut shaped piezoelectric load cell and I ended up getting an A in this class. Next up was my second half of junior year in the spring of 2015. The first course I took was Engineering Mechanics 2 where we learned about things like kinetics, kinematics, and energy methods and I ended up getting a B-. The second course I took was Fluid Mechanics where we learned about fluid behavior using Bernoulli's and Navier-Stokes equations. This was a challenging course for me where we did a lot of cool labs, such as measuring pressure in a wind tunnel, and I ended up getting a B in this course. Third was probability and statistics, which I thought was a lot more interesting than differential equations, and I ended up getting an A in this course. The fourth course was supply chain engineering, which was an advanced elective that I chose to take because I thought it was going to be a lot easier than the rest of my engineering courses, but the professor proved me wrong. There was so much calculus and probability involved in designing supply chain configurations, optimizing queues, and lean manufacturing techniques that I ended up getting a B. And this concluded my junior year. Next in the fall of 2015, I started my final year of engineering. Now because I had taken more courses freshman and sophomore year, and I had 28 credits from taking AP classes in high school, I only had to take three courses per semester as a senior, which was really nice. The first class I took was heat transfer, where we learned about conduction, convection, and radiation, and we had to optimize the design of a frying pan for cooking steak and console and I ended up getting an A- in this class. The second course I took was Mechanical Vibrations, where we learned about multi-degree freedom of systems, different modes of vibrations, and resonance. We also had to design and optimize a vehicle suspension system in MATLAB, and I ended up getting a B plus in this class. The third class I took was Electromechanical System Design, where we learned about gears, motors, and sensors, and we were tasked with designing an automated lab on a chip manufacturing line in SOLIDWORKS, and I ended up getting a B plus in this class. Finally, we come to the last semester of university in spring of 2016. The first class I took was Instrumentation and Theory of Experiments, and this class was notorious at my school for its massive workload, but luckily I ended up getting a B+. The labs in this class were insane, and we had to build circuits while applying different data acquisition techniques to measure things like flow, pressure, temperature, velocity, and strain. Then we had to write lab reports over 100 pages long that made me want to kill myself. The second course I took was Senior Capital Experience, where we worked with a company in Maine throughout the entire semester to improve one of their load cell products that experienced repeatability issues. We then had a final presentation in front of the entire mechanical engineering department, and I ended up getting a B plus in this class. Finally, the last course I took was Business Technology Innovation, which was the only business course I took within the School of Management, and we learned things like business models, startups, and the role of engineering within a business. Like many business courses, we had to read a lot of case studies, which really isn't my cup of tea, so I ended up getting a B plus. But anyways, that's it. That was a very short summary of what four years of engineering looks like. I hope this video was able to give you a good sense of what you can expect out of a mechanical engineering degree. And if it did, please don't forget to subscribe and like, and let me know in the comments below where do you plan to study or where are you currently studying at. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.